Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Outer Rim Cantina. My name's Alan and today I wanted to talk about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic and my experience playing the game for the first time in 2020. Despite the Old Republic being one of my favorite eras in Star Wars next to the Clone Wars, I have never played Coder at all before this year. I had always intended to buy the games and play through them, but I just never got around to it. After all, I already knew the stories of Revan and the Exile before playing the games, so I never had that much motivation to pick them up. Last month, however, a friend hit me up with a bunch of Steam codes for Coder 1 and 2 and The Force Unleashed, so I finally decided to play them. As far as the actual game performance goes, getting Coder to run properly in 2020 on my 1080p monitor wasn't that difficult. Once I followed a simple YouTube tutorial, I had it running 16x9 1080p and with proper UI scaling. While playing through, I didn't encounter any technical problems or even what I would consider to be game-breaking bugs. I only had Coder crash on me once when it was transitioning between cinematics, but of course that one time it crashed was the one time I hadn't saved in like 20 minutes, so I lost a bit of progress, but other than that the game ran pretty smooth. As for gameplay and mechanics, well, they do feel extremely dated, and they were a bit hard for me to get used to while playing through the first couple of planets. Once I got into the groove of things and started really getting into the story, things became much easier. I didn't play through the game with any mods except an upscaled movies mod, so I could actually see what was happening instead of just looking at pixelated garbage. If and when I do another playthrough, I'll probably get the restored content mod just to see if it really is that different from the base game. As I said earlier, I already knew the story of Revan, but playing through that story myself just added another layer of realism and intimacy. Something I wish more Star Wars games today would do is have you play as a character that you can customize and make decisions for yourself, but then have a what actually happened canon version of the story that fits into everything else Lucasfilm is creating. My favorite part of the whole thing was getting to make decisions that affected the characters and outcome of the story, even though it might not align with the what actually happened version. Because Revan was both a Jedi and Sith, I took a more balanced to great approach to the decisions and interactions I had throughout the journey. I think I ended up leaning more towards the light at the end just because I saved Bastila and the Republic and defeated Malak, but for the most part I stayed great during my whole playthrough. Overall, the story of Coder is a great one, and while it is some of the best Star Wars storytelling ever done, there are some other stories that I do enjoy more, but of course that is just my personal preference. I came away from Coder after 47 hours with an overall satisfied feeling. The only big thing that irked me while playing was that even though there isn't anything in the game when you first start that indicates you should do the planets in a certain order, you do have to do them in a certain order if you want to unlock all the side quests. Because I didn't do the planets in the correct order, I didn't get to do the Manon Hotel murder mission or finish out the story with Mission's brother. It's not a big loss and it didn't ruin my enjoyment of the game, but I just wish the planet order truly didn't matter for unlocking all the quests. I definitely plan to do another Coder playthrough with the restored content mod as a Dark Jedi sometime in the future, but overall I had a really fun experience playing through the vanilla game for the first time. Moving on to Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. I have mixed feelings about the sequel. As far as the story goes, I most definitely found the story of the Exile more interesting than the story of Revan, and found the ending and overall journey more fulfilling than the first game. Performance-wise, the Steam version of the game came with a 1080p widescreen option in the video settings, so that was nice as I didn't have to do any extra fiddling around like I did with Coder 1, and once again I only played through with an upscaled movies mod. I know a lot of people recommend the restored content mod for the Sith Lords, but I didn't really look into it until I was already done with Telos, and I really didn't want to start a new game just to get some additional stuff on Nar Shadda, so I just played the vanilla version. Speaking of Nar Shadda, that was definitely the most frustrating planet of either Coder 1 or 2. It was just so tedious to get through, and was extremely obvious where content had been cut from the final release. 
I found myself running from one side of the planet to the other just to try and do all the side quests, some of which took me hours to try and figure out how to do because you would have to do certain conversations in a certain order so you could get other dialogue options with someone else to actually complete the quest, and it was just an overall frustrating and tiresome experience. On top of that, at one point when I was still working on the side quests, which I prefer to do before the main quest in any RPG, it just forced me into doing the main story quest despite me not having enough med packs or the right gear that I needed to get through. Because of that, I had to wade through hours of bullshit and repeated deaths just to try and grind through it until I reached the point in the Nar Shaddaa story where I literally could not make it through because I was completely out of med packs. So I had to reload an earlier save, go back to Duxon, and buy and craft as many med packs as I could afford before going back to Nar Shaddaa and starting over. Nar Shaddaa was definitely the most frustrating point of the game for me and took forever to get through. Other than that, Paragus 2 and Telos were both interesting planets to explore, and it was cool to go back to Dantooine to see the aftermath of the Jedi Civil War. Going back to Korriban to walk where Revan had walked was neat, but overall kind of pointless, especially when you meet Darth Sion in the Academy, only to immediately run away. If the game had actually let me fight him there, I would have killed him because I was high enough level and geared enough that I was doing quite a bit of damage to him before the game forced me to run away. The Sith Lords also suffers from a, the same problem as the first game did, with not saying anywhere that I should do certain planets before others, and instead just not unlocking stuff or just making the story more confusing than it needed to be. I guess I did the game completely backward, because I went from Telos to Duxin, then to Onderon, then to Nar Shaddaa, then back to Onderon for the Civil War, then to Korriban, and finally Dantooine. Obviously, that was the wrong order, because I was never able to get what was in the Chirac cave on Korriban that Kray was talking about, and doing Dantooine last made absolutely no sense for the story, considering once I finished the main story, I went back to the Ebon Hawk, and then all of a sudden the Enclave was just rebuilt. The order I did the planets in just made the story more confusing than it needed to be, and it did take away from my overall enjoyment of the game a little bit, but... Once I thought through everything and put the pieces into place, the story really is some of the best Star Wars ever made. Despite all of the frustrations I had with Nar Shaddaa and the Planet Order, the story really did make it all worth it. Just like with Coder 1, being able to play through the Exile's journey myself and make decisions for them that might not be in the what actually happened version just made it feel much more personal. Besides that, the ending of the game was extremely satisfying and more enjoyable than Coder 1. With the Sith Lords, the ending was never set from the beginning like in Coder 1, where you knew from the start that you were going to defeat Malak. Coder 2 presented a twist in an already intricate story full of twists and turns. In the end, my light side exile chose to follow Revan once again into deep space to search for the hidden evil that was lurking there, which we learn in the Old Republic MMORPG was the Sith Emperor amassing power and an armada large enough to invade Republic space. Overall, I found myself more frustrated while playing Coder 2, and did a lot of standing around waiting for my vitality and force points to regen between waves of enemies because I never wanted to waste a med pack, up until the end of the game where they gave me like 50 life support packs. The ending boss fights of Coder 2 also seem to be a lot easier than the Malak fight in Coder 1. I'm not sure if that's just because I used a different strategy or what, but the Malak fight was one of the most frustrating things I've ever had to do in a video game. For the Darth Sion and Treya fights, I literally just kept running around in circles hitting them with Lightning Storm until they finally died, and surprisingly enough, it was actually very effective. All in all, both games in the Knights of the Old Republic series are great and deserve all of the praise they get. Another motivation I had for playing through the games was because I'm planning on creating a new Jedi Knight character in Swoter, and I wanted to better tie him into the overall history and story of the era. I can also see why many people say that the Jedi Knight story arc in Swoter is the canon story and the true continuation of the Knights of the Old Republic series, because it's the only story that really deals directly with the Emperor and even includes Lord Scourge, who directly interacted with Revan and the Exile, and has a vision of your Jedi Knight being the one to finally destroy the Emperor, not Revan. 
It'll be interesting for me to see how things play out in that story now that I've played through both Coder games. I get the feeling that it'll have much more meaning now that I have a better understanding of where the Emperor came from and the history associated with Scourge. Anyways, that's all I've got to say about my experience playing Knights of the Old Republic for the first time. As always, I'd love to know your opinions on the game and your experiences of playing the game down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you dropped a like, as those really do help a small channel like this, and consider subscribing if you want to see more Outer Rim Cantina content in your feeds every week. That's all the time I've got for today, I hope to see you back here in the cantina on Thursday for another Star Wars video. Until then, may the Force be with you.